Senator. Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Ms. Poliska. Present. Mr. Comiskey. Here. Mr. DeSarno. Here. Mayor Morgan. Here. Mrs. Joffrey. Here. Mr. Kogan. Here. Mrs. McKnight. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is a public meeting of Borough Council, Borough of Providence County, Union State, New Jersey. Adequate notice has been given in accordance with PM 1975, Chapter 231, that an annual notice or revision was made in conformance with Section 13 of the Act. We're not going to have any presentations because the kids can't make it this morning. So we have a uh, hearing on Ordinance 01. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Can you read the title, please, Denise? Ordinance 2024-1 is an ordinance of the Borough of New Providence, County of Union, State of New Jersey, deleting Chapter 41, Article 2 of the Code of the Borough of New Providence. Okay, anybody wishing to address council on this ordinance and this ordinance only? <laughs> Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Okay, we have appointments. I just need roll call on that. Oh, does, yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Poliska? Aye. Mr. Comiskey? Aye. Mr. DeSarno? Um, Mrs. Joffrey? Yes. Mr. Kogan? Yes. Mrs. McKnight? Yes. Okay, I'm going to read the uh, follow appointments. Um, the SID Board of Directors, the Planning Board meeting will be Jean Castagna, Beautification, Gail Cronin, Perry Everton, Adrian Foote. Roxanne Jacqueline, Nancy Valeria, Diversity, Sarika Devate, Jose Lopez Garcia, Karina Curry, Delaney Cousin, Christine Morgan, Cindy Warme, Jane Zhu, Chanda Janssen. I'm getting there. Mm. Laura Morano, Bikar Sharma, Anna Rutan. Anushri Sharma and Kathleen Dolan. Public Art, Mary Jean Kazani, Liliana Drake, Jill Lefebvre, Christopher O, Denise Moser, Arlene Regan, uh, Louise Wheeler, and Evelyn Vigna. Mental Health, Donna Buasio, Lisa Fama, Deborah Carrot, Colleen LaRoque, Deborah Merrick, Christopher O, Deb Mooney's, uh, Alexander, what's it, Rancier, mm -hmm. and Evelyn Vigna. MP Alliance, Miguel Marshall. Mm -hmm. Can I have a, a motion to accept the appointments? So moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, so be it. Need approval for uh, minutes for December 5th. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. No, so be it. January 23rd. Motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. No, so be it. January 30th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, so be it. Okay, we have correspondence, Board of Adjustment, 25 Stanley Road, DEP, under route down storage tank, 183 Oakwood. Board of Adjustment, 23 Grant. Board of Adjustment, 491 Central. New Jersey Transit, public hearing notice, proposed uh, change in fares. Oh, I guess they're going down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JCPNL, public hearing on the LRAM filing. Uh, Remington and Vernick Engineers um, for NJDEP per permit. There's Springfield Avenue Park Improvements in Berkeley Heights. Where are we getting that? We get from the surrounding towns when they do things. Where is that in Springfield Avenue? That's where the uh, uh, Berkeley Springfield. Plaza was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. And um, Chatham Township, Stormwater Control. Any comments? Seeing none, mm -hmm. we'll go to Council Business Administration, Lisa. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2024-74 is a resolution authorizing the application for 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. Let's get back up here. Administration <laughs> resolution 2024-71, resolution approving the requisition R2400265 for affordable interior systems care of ARD facilities management group doing business as Paramount FMS in the amount not to exceed $13,631.52 for office furniture state contract number 19-F00D-00876. This is approving a purchase order for office furniture for the clerk's office. The clerk's office has been redesigned <coughs> to provide more workspace and an increased, an increased storage facilities. The current uh, furniture in that room is gonna be moved over to the public health office. Okay. Advisory boards, Nadine DeVerso's diversity. Yep. Thank you so much. Resolution 2024-072 is a resolution approving request of the New Providence Diversity Advisory Committee to sponsor community events during the calendar year 2024. So this is really just a first pass of things that we are interested in doing this calendar year. Uh, if you look at the attachment, we have it broken down by if we want to do stuff on social media, with the library, with the high school, through the recreation department, website, and other. Um, not all of this, obviously, is gonna be able to be done because a couple of them already passed. Um, we did do the MLK Day event uh, with the recreation department. And as you can see, a lot of this um, that we're looking to do this year is coordinating with other areas. So coordinating with the recreation department, coordinating with the library, um, trying really to bring um, education and celebration of all of our different cultures across the board. Um, as we get closer, um, we will provide more details, um, but to note, um, we are looking to do things um, around Race Unity Day again, like we did last year with the students, which was outstanding. We are adding Pride Month, working with the Recreation Center. Uh, we'll be doing awareness around Juneteenth, Hispanic Heritage Month, Diwali, Native American Heritage Month, and Night of a Thousand Stars. Um, so again, this is kind of just a broad brush around what we want to do. There's not a ton of detail around this yet, but as that becomes available, we will come back and present them. Okay, who's uh, sustainability? That's me. That's me. Go for it. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2024-073, resolution uh, uh, approving a request of the New Providence Sustainability Advisory Committee to sponsor community events during the calendar year. 2024. So similar to, as uh, uh, Nadine mentioned, uh, this approves uh, the events for 2024 calendar year. It, some events include the Green Fair, tree sapling giveaways, the ever popular and growing free cycle event, mobile shredding, and of course, Bash the Trash, which is held at the library. Okay. Community activities, Matt. <coughs> I was just wondering if I could do like a free cycle event in my house, take care of the basement. Just have to, just have to bring it you. to the parking lot, that's all. <laughs> okay, resolution 74 is a resolution authorizing the application for local recreation improvement grant 2024 for the Borough of Providence. Uh, this is uh, approving the submission of a grant application uh, for approximately $100,000, uh, which will also uh, help with the grants that we applied for for Oakwood Park. for. Uh, our recreation department. Resolution 75 is a salary resolution approving seasonal employees for our, our baseball programs coming up uh, this season. Okay, finance, Diane. Engineering. engineering. Oh, engineering. Alex. Wanna, Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, resolution 2024 076, resolution accept accepting the proposal of Collier Engineering and Design for professional engineering services regarding the formal inspection of the clear water. Tension Basin Dam. Uh, this inspection will be performed in compliance with NJDEP, uh, Bureau of Dam Safety and Flood Control, requirements that the dam safety standards meets NJAC 720. This is a required inspection that's performed every two years. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2024-077 <coughs> is a resolution authorizing payment of the attached bills, document, uh, bills payable lists in the amount of $9,353,765.70. Um, significant items include our February appropriation for the Board of Ed in eight 
in the amount of eight million seven hundred and twenty one dollars six seven hundred and twenty one thousand six oh one our January health insurance premium to Horizon in the amount of $117,207. Our February appropriation for New Providence Library in the amount of $98,258. And um, to Koch Holdings in the amount of $76,400 for two new police cars. Resolution 2024-078 is a trust fund transfer resolution. And this is a transfer of money from the 2023 budget into trust fund accounts for insurance liability and snow removal. Resolution 2024-079, appropriation reserves transfer resolution. This is budget transfers within the 2023 budget to cover carryover bills. And resolution 2024-080 is a resolution authorizing emergency temporary appropriation and this is amending the 2024 temporary budget to include $2,000 for tuition reimbursement for required employee certification. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2024-81 is a resolution of the Borough of New Providence County Union, State of New Jersey, authorizing submission of a permanent application to the Department of Environmental Protection for the New Providence Memorial Library. Uh, specifically, this is authorizing the New Providence Memorial Library to file a permit application with the state DEP uh, for purposes of expansion of the borough property. Um, our council library rep, uh, Councilwoman McKnight, has some more details to offer on this. Right, I just wanted to offer a little bit more flavor on that. Uh, as part of the library board, um, we did, a while ago, we did a strategic plan. Part of that strategic plan was looking at expansion of the library. Um, because of where the library is situated, it sort of sits on wetlands. So in order to even move forward a little bit with the thoughts of expanding, they needed to do a survey. Uh, they uh, contracted dynamic engineering, and they did that survey. Um, we do actually, it does sit on flood hazard area, and it, like I said, surrounded by wetlands. But the survey showed that we are within 50 feet. Of, so there's like a buffer of about 50 feet. So the library does want to move forward uh, with those plans, and part of that is asking the borough, since the borough does own the building, the borough will have to apply for that DEP approval. So that's what that is for. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, resolution 2024-82 is a resolution <coughs> approving a memorandum of agreement from the County of Union for a drug recognition expert call-out program. And finally, Resolution 2024-83 is a resolution authorizing the agreement between the Burn of Providence County of Union uh, and, is it GOTO? Is GOATO? Is that GOATO. GOATO. Uh, for distribution of reusable bags. I just have a quick question because <coughs> my notes here have, are, we're distributing the, re, the bags or the next note says recycling of reusable bags. Which way are we going? This it, is it's both. We're, we're going to be collecting bags. Them to the county, the county will then recycle them with GoTo. GoTo will then, in turn, recycle oh, them back to us excellent. to like the food pantry. So, if I have a lot of bags in my house, I could, yeah. I can go ahead and give them, donate them back. Terrific, thank you. I'm sure I'm not alone with that. We're part of the pilot program, right? We are part of the pilot program. Excellent, thank you. Perfect. I get a ton at home. <laughs> okay, uh, personnel, Alex. Thank you, Mayor. Just two appointments. Uh, resolution 2024. <coughs> dash 084 resolution appointing Noel Grill as full-time administrative assistant for the borough of New Providence. Uh, Noel will be working in the clerk's office as a full-time admin assistant effective February 21st of 2024. The starting salary will be $50,000. Uh, resolution 2024-085 resolution appointing Teresa Batsford as full-time administrative assistant for the borough of New Providence. Uh, Teresa will be also working in the clerk's office as a full-time admin assistant, effective February 21, uh, 2024. Starting salary as well will be $50,000. Okay, uh, public safety, that's me. <laughs> we just have raffle applications for OLP, RA 1206, 1207, and 1208, <clears throat> all uh, applications were properly prepared and reviewed. Um, we'll go to Public Works and Alex. Thank you, Mayor. Right yeah, no, resolution 2024-086, resolution approving requisition R240197, 
for W. E. Timmerman Company Incorporated in the amount not to exceed one hundred thirty six thousand twenty eight dollars and eighty two cents. This is for the ODB leaf vacuum source well contract number 031121-ODB. This is approving the purchase of a leaf vacuum. That's been planned for some time. Yeah. Uh, and then the last part, authorization to solicit proposals for tree trimming services in Centennial Park. This is a uh, request for RFP for tree pruning, removing of girdling roots, treatment with uh, canvas stack growth regulator, mulch replacement, and tree and stump removal. Okay. Let's go. No discussion items. Let's go to council committee reports. Um, first thing we had our roundup of uh, 2023 20, with the uh, police department. It was well attended by the public, and um, they did a lot of work this year. Uh, and they have a lot more plans, so they, the police department took their notes, and they'll be moving forward on their plan, and we'll do another uh, review next year. Um, I just wanted to say thank Public Works. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an outstanding job today. And, you know, I know they got kind of beat up for their previous one, but, you know, they were out there at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. And they, they did salt, and they plowed, and you can put salt down, a ton of salt on the roads, but if it's below 27 degrees, nothing melts. So I heard from other towns that we were the best around. So it was just a difficult storm to time me, okay. but I just really want to thank them. I just want to mention out uh, uh, about Tuesday's storm um, in my uh, neighborhood, literally, uh, utility pole um, got hit by a tree branch. Um, I went immediately on the action line, uh, put it in. Uh, within minutes, um, not only did JCPNL show up, the police showed up. Um, um, the JCPNL person happens to be a local resident. Uh, just everything, it's, it was nice to see how everything worked so well. They kept everybody safe communicated extremely well, got the, a whole new pole replaced, new transformer, all by 4.30 uh, p.m. That's good. Yeah, and uh, just amazing to see the JCPNL guys asked, uh, can DPW come and clear some of the snow away? I mean, within minutes, it, it was done. Yeah. And, uh, Councilman Kogan, I would echo your, your sentiment. I was very happy to see that power restored because uh, my neighbor, uh, telephone pole got hit and, and went down and I lost my electricity so <laughs> it was the same incident I lived next door to Council yeah. Kogan so <laughs> the power pole was my other neighbor no. yeah yeah no we were very fortunate that the restoration efforts were excellent uh, electricity came on you mentioned by the by later in the afternoon and uh, and it was it was good yeah. to see how quickly everyone got on top of it so thank you you know when you when it's a storm like that and not everybody's affected they come right out. Yeah. It's yeah. when yeah. everybody gets affected where it takes a Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, Diane. Thank you. Um, so we had our first finance committee meeting earlier in the week. Um, a thank you and a shout out to all the borough employees who worked really hard to put the, together all of the backup. Um, we're moving along. Uh, it looks good so far, but there's still a lot of work to do. Um, Historical Society, uh, just uh, they have an annual dinner on the 18th, and um, they're moving along, and we're starting with you know our Rev 250, and I think we're doing well. Um, do you want me to comment on public art, or you want to? Yeah. So Nadine and I had a meeting with um, Arlene about public art. Um, it looks great. If you go down the hallway, um, the rec hallway, there's a lot of different um, little uh what do we call these things art fixtures art <laughs> fixtures installations art installations. installations um so just one thing to note for that that is uh, funded specifically only by donations and grants so um you know please consider donating to that and that's it she has a lot of projects and i think we'll have some good things going forward mm -hmm. all right <clears throat> so I just want to say congratulations to our Director of Recreation, Allison Smith, who not only is one of the best recreation directors in the county, 
probably in the state, but is also uh, a very active volunteer in our in our town and to our boosters. Uh, she was awarded the 2024 <clears throat> Bo Catano Award for Service uh, last week. Uh, actually, earlier this week, uh, this booster the booster club awards this to recognize an outstanding citizen in our community who makes an impact on our children and supports programs for our education and athletics. Uh, it's a fantastic award. Uh, I thank the Catano family for that. Uh, and congratulate, again, Allison uh, for that award, well-deserved. Uh, I also just want to wish our winter sports programs good luck in, in as they conclude their seasons and compete in the state tournaments. I know my daughter today is running in groups. Uh, so I want to wish everyone not only in winter track, basketball, swimming, uh, wrestling, all the winter sports. Good luck. Great. Yeah, no, I, would, I would just echo uh, congratulations um, to Allison. I mean, that, that's, that's the type of stuff that makes a, a, a borough community, uh, to, to volunteer like that. And she does a wonderful job, so we're very fortunate. Other than that, I don't have anything else to report, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, affordable housing. Uh, we had a meeting with our planner, uh, Councilman Kamiski, the Mayor, um, Administrator Kukaro, and myself. Um, just really trying to get an understanding of what is going on. Um, nobody knows what we can expect, uh, but we are looking to educate ourselves and provide information to our residents as it becomes available to us. Um, and also uh, what it is that we can do to understand it and deal with it going forward. Communication committee, we also met. Um, I do have some exciting news there. Uh, we have an Instagram account now. If you go on New Prob NJ on Instagram, you'll see our new page. Uh, please like, follow, everything that you can do. It's just another means to get communication out there. Um, it will be, it'll follow exactly what Facebook has, but it's a great new um, platform for people who use Instagram, because not everybody uses Facebook anymore. Um, so the communication committee is, um, that's an ongoing committee, right? So it never finishes, it just keeps going and tries to keep improving any means of communication to get as much word out there to our residents about everything going on. Um, and we will be continuing to meet as a group to make sure that we get all the information out to our residents. Uh, what else? Diversity we talked about. Mental health um, is in progress. The uh, Municipal Alliance also have information there. We are having a Narcan training. We did this several years ago, um, but as everybody is aware, um, fentanyl and a lot of drug issues are everywhere. You know, we're not precluded from that. Um, so we are providing a Narcan training right here in Council Chambers. It will be on Wednesday, November, uh, November. Sorry, Wednesday, March 27th um, at 7 p.m. It's open to all residents. So I highly urge everybody to come to that. If it's run the way it was run last time, everybody will go home with the Narcan kit. It's just something important because you just never really know when that's going to hit close to home. Um, so we're very excited to bring that back to our community, um, and I urge everyone to attend. And that's it for me. Okay. But when I was I was in Trenton um, last week, and um, the assembly did pass A4, mm -hmm. and that's the affordable housing, which eliminates COA, and they're coming up with another system, and they're coming up with new numbers, mm -hmm. and the new numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. uh, the League of Municipalities has been trying to, to work with them. They got some amendments put in, but um, who knows? It's, uh, I mean, I don't even know the numbers. Somebody show me a number. I don't know if that's the right number or what. And they have a timeline, but I wouldn't even be, uh, be, what is it, wed to that timeline. I mean, it was... Uh, <clears throat> it, there's a lot going on. Was it an aggressive one, meaning quicker than, than one would expect? No. It lasted, the, the discussion lasted about an hour and a half, two mm -hmm. hours. No, the timeline, and, the timeline is everything starts at the beginning of next year. Okay. So, and that, it, and it all depends on when the legislation in, itself is passed, a certain number of days after that. But we heard a little bit around the formula, and it's Very complex. So, so complicated. <clears throat> you have to like read through and... 
it's very, very complicated. Um, but we are, you know, we will provide information as it becomes available. We will try to come up with a way if, um, you know, constituents want to reach out to their legislators, similar to what we did last time. You know, this is, this affects all of us. This affects our home and it'll, it'll have great impact on every town, borough, city in the state. And as much as we can have our voices heard, we should. I don't know what it's going to do, but we should do what we can do. Okay. Alex. Uh, just one thing to report on the Sustainability uh, Advisory Committee. Um, one of our uh, sustainability members, uh, uh, committee members, Adrian Foote, very passionate about trees <laughs> in town. Um, She's been actively pursuing this, uh, this one application called the New Jersey Urban and Community Forestry application. It's an annual report that you have to submit as a borough. Um, it, it looked great. We, we discussed it. Uh, she then proceeded to uh, proceed with applying for it on behalf of, uh, she can't apply for it. We have to, as a borough, apply for it. Uh, but I want to thank Bernadette. Bernadette immediately said, hey, we only have a day to get this information in. So Ralph from DPW had a lot of information, so glad that that got put in in, in a timely, very timely fashion, almost at the last minute. So it's a good accomplishment. This is going to allow us to get more grant opportunities uh, for the borough with, with respect to trees throughout the, the town. So thank you to Adrian and Bernadette for getting this done. Okay, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Um, so as part of administration and a little bit of communication, some overlap there, right? Um, we are in the process of putting together a committee handbook. Mm -hmm. uh, that really is going to outline to the committee chairs, to the members, what their purpose is, why, to, why they're doing it, how to do it. Um, so hopefully that will be able to answer a lot of questions of the process and what their roles are, what council's role is. So we're working on putting that together and hopefully rolling that out to all the committees soon. Um, I think we're going to, it's sort of like a guidebook, right? A handbook, a guidebook, but something that's much needed. Uh, another thing we're looking at is the volunteer application, um, looking at not just the application itself, maybe revamping that a little bit, but the process of approving the volunteers and, you know, how we're going to go about that. So that that is also in place right now that we're working on. Um, capital Review is going to be meeting this week. Um, beautification Advisory, so the tree, the resolution for the tree trimming is, that's part of the Beautification's long-term plan for Centennial Park. So we're really looking forward to that because I think that's going to be a huge improvement to the park. And then once that's done, we'll be, they're also going to like take care of trimming some of those roots that are starting to grow out kind of level that off, hopefully put some hoop fencing around all the trees, make it look a little bit neater so that, you know, people don't ride their bikes over the plants. <laughs> so that's just part of that whole process. Um, what else do we have? Library board. I did miss the last meeting because we I was here at a council, mm -hmm. at a council meeting. However, um, just to update, I, we spoke about uh, the DEP approval that's needed for the planned expansion. The library board is very excited about that because we needed that survey to say, yes, you can move forward. Um, so now that we have that, we can move forward with the proposal uh, for the expansion. And the reason why that is happening is, like I said, part of the overall strategic plan. But the library is getting busier and busier. And it's really needed. Um, for instance, during midterms, Stacy estimated that there were between 275 and 300 kids in the library at one time. That's fantastic. They took every table, every chair. There were kids sitting on the floor. Um, she was thrilled, and we're thrilled. We're thrilled that the library is getting used. Uh, we really want it to be a community place, a community hub like a community living room, I think that's what Stacy's calling it. So part of that strategic plan is not just the expansion, but adding seating, um, adding some new tables, making it really comfortable, and just providing that space for our residents to, to meet and, and work. Actually, Lisa, to chime in on that, um, I think it was a couple Sundays ago, I brought Alex to the library. We went in the, ch in the children's section. Uh, it was the <laughs> <laughs> My grandson, Alex. Yeah. 
you're, you're welcome anytime. Um, and we went into the children's room, and it was the same thing. Everybody brought their kids there, and it was kind of just a hangout. People sat and read books. They were doing puzzles. They had coloring. They added adult-sized chairs, didn't they? Yes, they did. They <laughs> so didn't have to sit on the baby chairs. Um, <laughs> and I, I, it was great. He had, he had the best time. So I brought my children to the library in the past. It's just nice to see that expand and move forward. So I just want to chime in on Thanks. that room as well. Another thing that they've completed is the transition to Maine, which is the Maine Consortium. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been a huge improvement. The, res the, uh, the patrons love it. Um, so some of the things there, more computers, more robust IT capabilities, more access to books and larger collection. For instance, I ordered, um, I went on to, to see if we had a book for, um, it's, on, it's been on the New York, best, uh, New York bestsellers list for like a year. So I'm like, okay, I gotta read this. We didn't have it, so I had to like um, put a hold on it. I literally got a call the next day, the, they had the book, it came from Mount Olive. Wow. Right. So, like, it like any kind of any book you want to read, they'll be able to get it. Um, they also have online access to a lot of periodicals. You can read the Wall Street Journal online for free. So, I encourage you to go to the website, look to see how you could download that new um, library platform, so you can have access to all their materials that they have available. Also, no, self checkout, and like I said, no font, no more fines for oh, overdue books, which is nice. <laughs> Um, so that's that on the library, and I just wanted, although not a borough committee, I just wanted to make a note that the Community Service Association, which is an integral part of our borough, it is a nonprofit <coughs> that operates as, as a standalone, but they do a lot of work for our residents. They provide financial resources for folks that are struggling, they help with rent, medical bills, utilities, and we help a lot, more We're than you would life. think. Yeah. Another thing we do is we provide financial resources for LINK, mm -hmm. uh, which then in turn gives back to our community as well. So they're having their annual fundraiser, which is the pasta dinner and basket raffle mm -hmm. on March 3rd. It's a Sunday. And of course, we couldn't do it without the Lions because they do all the cooking for us, all the serving, all the cooking. Um, so it's a great community event. Today is all hands on deck wrapping probably about 80 raffle baskets. So please try to get there. It's going to be a great a great event. Okay, the one thing I did want to bring up, um, I want to keep everybody up to date on the Nokia property. Um, Bernadette and I did go up there and meet with, uh, I guess, the president and vice president up there, and uh, they told us that they would be leaving that facility in mid uh, 2028. Um, they are they, they, it's getting sold to a developer. Um, uh, Nokia is going to lease the property from the developer until it's time to leave. Okay. We also uh, had a call from Governor Murphy. And he offered all the help he could. I don't know how much he'll be able to help us because uh, it's, a, it's private property. And a, and a private business. But uh, he offered, uh, you know, some grants for us for planning and things like that. And we're having a meeting with Tim Sullivan, the economic uh, um, development person for the state, and somebody, Eric? Brophy. Brophy. So um, that's coming up. But, um, you know, like the uh, governor said, I'll see you at the state of the state, so we'll see. Um, but I just want to bring everybody up to date. There are no plans that have been given to us, but as soon as we find out something, we are going to let you know, because it's going to make a big impact on not only our community, but this whole ridge up here. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're at right now. So at this point, Bernadette, you're up. Uh, so just a, a two things um, to, make, to piggyback on Nadine's affordable housing. Um, the bill that has left the assembly is scheduled for vote in the Senate in, <coughs> sorry, uh, scheduled for a vote in the Senate and in the end of March. So that is something that I have been watching very closely and um, trying to keep you guys informed of what's happening. 
Um, and the only other thing that um, I'd like to remind people, if you see a street light out, please report it. If you see a pothole, please report it. Um, please don't assume that we know that it's out there. Thank you. Okay, public comments, anybody wishing to address council? Yes, <coughs> Uh, Kathleen Dolan, 12 Laurel Drive. Uh, just a couple things, um, Lisa, um, Councilwoman McKnight, uh, you mentioned a committee handbook. Is that for uh, borough committees or for volunteer advisory committees or both? Both. Yeah. Both. So I think it'll be like, a, like we, I mean, not to sound derogatory, but Nadine and I were calling it like committee for dummies kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that all the volunteer advisory committee members would be given right, so a copy you, of and right, they it'll can give you, understand their role. Right, instructions of like, if you plan on holding an event, this is what you need to do. This is, if you have an issue, this is what, this is, this, these are your roles as the volunteer, this is council's roles as, our, as the liaison. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that will just answer a lot of questions and yeah. clear up I a lot of- I think that would help a lot. Yeah. Um, but that's separate from the SOP that you mm -hmm. had that yes. meeting to talk about. Right. It's, kind of yeah. in conjunction with the SOP. So, I mean, you can never separate an SOP from a process. <coughs> so the SOP is really what's going to drive the handbook. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're, they're intricately linked. Okay, great. Um, and then in terms of the affordable housing, uh, how are you thinking about it keeping the public informed? Like, mm -hmm. actually, what would be the mechanism? Would there be, like, a, a public forum like you had for the public safety uh, last week, or yeah. you have some other mechanism in mind? As, as we move on and hear about more, I'm sure we'll have public forums. That's what we did last time. We had several public forums, plus we had documentation that went out there. I think we had, um, like, a wasn't a keep, not a live handbook yeah. in my brain, well, but we, do we have a you're required presentation. To. You are required to. Okay. So what we do, we bring the planner in, we bring the attorney in, we, we bring a lot of people in. And there'll be a, uh, a, a discussion on, on what, what we really, it, we're really at, at the mercy of the state here. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. Our planners don't know. Nobody knows in the entire state what exactly is going to happen here. They got rid of COA. Uh, who knows? Um, I, I asked around the other day. None of the assembly people know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows right. exactly how this is going to work out. So when I say I don't think they're wedded to a timeline, mm -hmm. I, I, I think this is going to be going round and round for a while. So, so. is there impact, uh, because of this flux, is there impact on the existing um, construction that's already been? No. no, so they can move ahead under whatever be, uh, yeah Separate that plan. we've already been approved for all that okay now this is this stuff is going to be in addition mm -hmm. in addition and for future yeah. projects so you're looking at i saw some numbers and i don't know if they're accurate but it'll make your head spin mm. okay so um, in the meantime, though, I would like to try to put together something that our residents can reach out to the legislators, that they can reach out. Uh, for example, the Borough of Madison does have a page on their website um, that includes um, like letters to the governor, letters to the state senate, letters to the speaker. We tried that last time as well. Um, we would like to do that as well. So it, you know, being that this is moving quickly, we are going to try to get that out as soon as possible. Just anything that people could have a, a voice, have a say, just to get the word out about their feelings about it. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be working on that hopefully sooner rather than later. Okay. I think it might be helpful as well just to have a affordable housing for dummies kind of um, document prepared um, for the public to just yeah. understand what this is all about and what yeah. are the implications mm -hmm. because I and tell you I've talked to a lot of people some of the basic and facts. they just don't yeah. really know how to how to the interpret problem it. Is we don't know. Yeah, I'm just talking about the concept. What's the mm -hmm. idea behind it? What are the current um, 
you know, laws that have impacted, where, how does it affect New Providence right now? Mm -hmm. And then what are we looking forward to in the future? That should already be is out there. Is there something like that? Yeah. So Kathleen, mm -hmm. you're looking for something more of how we got where we are and well, where we're going. Yeah, that includes sort of the, like, like what it means to people in town. Why should they care about this? Um, because it's really a bit of a, there's so much confusion around it that people are like, well, I, don't, I have no idea what this is about. So See, the, they don't. The problem is the whole thing is over development and density. Mm -hmm. it, the suburban towns are, are, are going to be lost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the affordables are one thing, but that's only the developer won't come in and put in affordables. They need, uh, what? Uh, market rate. The market, market rate. Mm -hmm. And like here, you've got 192 and what, 30, 30. That, are, that are affordable. Well, somebody wants to build, let's say, 100 affordables, they're going to have to put 400 in. I mean, that, that's unsustainable mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I wish there was something I, I could put my finger on. And yeah, I'm not talking really about a solution. You're talking about the ju judiciary getting involved again. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's crazy. And everyone yeah. agrees that New Jersey should be more affordable, and affordable housing is very, very important. And there's a lot of people that that affects. I mean, my daughter would qualify for something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. nobody is disagreeing that affordable housing is very important in the state. It's having a common sense approach. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's a lot of not common sense. Mm -hmm that is being thrown at this and th being thrown at every municipality, borough, city in the state. And it's just a matter of how to deal with that in a responsible, common sense way. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, are you saying that there is something already out there that could be like shared with people? I, I can actually pare it down for you oh, okay. so that it'd be more, um, more digestible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> more for dummies. Yeah. Exactly. More digestible. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we put all and that together. The last thing is about the um, stormwater control ordinance that uh, Chatham shared with us. Obviously, we share a border. This is from the township, right? So um, I'm just wondering, is there a reason why they shared it with us? I know you said that towns often share things with their surrounding right. towns. But do we have our own ordinance related to stormwater control? If not, are we going to be referencing yeah, this or getting uh, ideas from this? We're to working with uh, Congressman Kane to uh, do some, uh, try and get a grant to take care of a lot, a lot, a lot of these flooding problems. Um, you know how, how quick the federal government works. So, um, but the Army Corps of Engineers have been out here. They've, uh, uh, Bernadette and I and Ralph, we walked around some of the, along the river, this and that. Actually, the Passaic River is Morris County. Our, oh. our, our border doesn't go to the middle of the river, it goes to the bank. Mm. So sometimes when we want to get dredging done, this and that, we have to ask Morris County. And All the way along? Like, wow. Okay, yeah. I don't think anybody knows so, that. So, <laughs> um, you know, it needs to be dredged out, mm -hmm. the river. There's a lot, a lot of dead trees, a lot of, a lot of things in there. But, um, you know, when you have a Hurricane Ida or Floyd or something like that, it doesn't matter how much storm remediation you do, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, hey, you're going to get water. There's no way to get around it. Okay. You can't have eight inches of water in, in, in like four hours and don't expect everything to flood out. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, just so I'm clear, we do have an ordinance? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it? We're required Similar. to have an ordinance, just right. so you know. Ours was last updated in 2021. Okay. Okay. Good to know. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Well, I don't see anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need a motion for items 1 through 18, please. So moved. I'll second. Oh, uh, roll call, please. Ms. Baliska? Aye. Mr. Kaminsky? Aye. Mr. Gisarno? Aye. Mrs. Joffrey? Yes. Mr. Kogan? Yes. Mrs. McDonough? Yes. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. If you could all leave your lap if you couldn't leave your laptops on, we have to do some updates before we put okay. them away. Thank you. 
All in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. No? So be it. Everybody be safe out there. And hopefully uh, things will nice up. <laughs>